Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Busted Strategies number 49, one away from number 50, jumping into another Midnight Hunt draft. Let's get to it. Alright, that queue filled up quick. Everybody ready? Pushing them buttons? <laughs> there we have it. Thanks friends, that was quick. So, Alright, let's see what we have here. Uh, I could already see an interesting set starting off with the rares. We have uh, Vadric, the the blue-red guy. Uh, he's eh, fine. I'm not super excited about it, but there is also an obsessive astronomer hanging out here. There's the Graph Keeper and the Root Coil Creeper. All kinds of, like, really uh, above medium, not quite bomb quality cards. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and so uh, I think, realistically, if we're going to come out here, the, the card that we would be looking to draft would actually just be this devoted Graph Keeper. Uh, but our last video was also a Disturbed video, and so I'm going to go ahead and stay away from that. But again, I think your first pick out of this one should be a devoted Graph Keeper. Uh, and, and that leaves us kind of like in an interesting spot if we're not going to be chasing down these Disturbed cards. Um, and that I don't really like starting out in blue, green, or uh, or in green or in red, unless we like really know what we're getting ourselves into. Uh, but I, I think we can start off with Vadric here and see if we can't uh, piece together uh, something with him. Otherwise, I mean, we aren't missing out on too much. And then there is the stolen vitality. Perhaps we'll get to to table either a stolen vitality um, uh, or the obsessive astronomer. But interesting pack here. I'm not sure what people are taking over Grafted Identity. Uh, it's an uncommon. I, I would suspect the only thing that I would really be willing to take over Grafted Identity would be uh, the likes of Morbid Opportunist, or um, I, I don't think I would take the removal spell over it, right? Uh, there's a foul play or something, some, the thing that lets you uh, kill anything and take two damage. There's also the one that like lets you kill a unit with two or less and investigate. Like None of these cards, none of the removal cards I'm more interested in than Grafted Identity, so that's quite strange. Uh, we're we're going to snatch this one up. Uh, I'd have to assume this is pretty decent for us as well, as person to our right shouldn't be drafting blue. I can't imagine there's like a blue uncommon you would take over this, or even like you're not taking Scab Wrangler, the blue black, you're not taking Graph Digger Assistant, whatever the blue white one we just passed is. Very strange. We'll take the Grafted Identity. And then there was a Flame Channeler there, which would be nice to uh, nice to table if possible. Alrighty, well, we, we can continue on with the blue cards. I mean, as I suspect, the blue should be open. Um, not, it's kind of tough to tell here. There's just an uncommon and a common missing. But again, with the guy to our right passing us grafted identity, I've got to assume that blue is open and come in and take the organ hoarder. Uh, and so as we're kind of like starting to assemble our deck, we're not really looking to be in a, a, a Festival Crasher style deck. That's what we'd see a lot of whenever we draft blue red. These three cards that we've drafted between uh, Vadric, Organ Hoarder, and Grafted Identity are all pretty controlly and pretty slow. Uh, and so I think we're looking more towards being in a, uh, a blue based control deck if we want to continue to play Vadric. I mean, we might just end up drafting blue white at the end of the day or blue green, but um, I, I think we're most definitely going to find ourselves in blue. Okay, interesting set. I don't want to read too much into there being an Eaten Alive, but uh, this is pretty late for one, when there's only one rare and one uncommon missing, so someone else took another common, uh, and then the Eaten Alive rolls through. But I, I think I'm still kind of like on board with this, the idea of this blue-red deck. I'm going to make, this is where I would be calling this making a reach pick, taking this Delver of Secrets. I, I feel like uh, if we come across two of them, it's extremely good. Uh, and I don't feel like we're missing out on too much. Uh, I mean, the Eaten Alive is pretty good, but I, I still am like fairly confident the person to our right is just drafting black. So we'll, we'll pick up the Delver. It, it always hurts to pass on these Eaten Alives, but we're at least uh, you know pretty well solidifying ourselves into blue. Okay, interesting set. There is the Festival Crasher, uh, which we're not going to be able to table or use. Uh, but we'll go ahead and pick up the Galvanic Iteration here. This The Iteration is uh, pretty expensive, and a lot of times it just doesn't do anything. And so uh, if we do end up looking to draft like a Festival Crasher style deck, this comes in and kind of replaces playing something like Abandon the Post. Uh, you, you can't have too many of these cards that are uh, really speculative and kind of do nothing if you don't have another spell. Uh, and so... We'll need to be a little bit careful if we're going to be running things like uh, the Galvanic Iteration. 
All right, well, finally, we get a pack that's not that exciting. <laughs> it has, has to happen eventually, right? And so, uh, you know, not too much going on here. Hallowed Respite, not a particularly interesting card. Secrets of the Key is not the cheap flashback. Shit, I guess we're taking that. I super clicked it. I was going to say that's not the cheap uh, card that we're looking for. We're looking for the one that lets us alter the top of our deck, uh, given that we have this Delver of Secrets uh, but we super clicked it, Secrets of the Key is ours. Uh, and then in here, this is a fairly easy Falcon Abomination. So this has been kind of weird, right? It doesn't seem like red is particularly open, uh, but blue most certainly is. So we probably should have just ended up being a blue-black <laughs> blue deck here, but I, I think this is still fine. Get the Abomination, a nice pickup here in the Gale Drifter. Uh, a, a lot of these blue decks do have really strong curves where you just play... Uh, any two drop into the abomination to the gale drifter uh, be quite happy to do that here pretty late startle as well people don't seem to like startle as much as i like startle in this format all right so we might have to abandon these red cards uh, I, I was looking to see if the, the flame channeler and something else no the obsessive astronomer was in this pack the flame channeler channeler would be in the next one i have a pretty good feeling neither of those are going to table yeah so it's a little unfortunate we'll pick up the evolving wilds here um, we're, we're pretty well locked into blue. It uh, doesn't seem like red is particularly happening, but if we want to splash, the Evolving Wilds, of course, makes it easier. We can find a replacement for a, a, a Drowned Yard Amalgam if it comes down to it. So, alrighty, interesting, interesting. So, um, move the Secrets of the Key over. Our curve is currently abysmal. Uh, <laughs> there's, there, there's no two ways uh, around that notion. Here, I'm just going to take the no way out. We might uh, we might end up in blue-black against uh, against our will. <laughs> so we'll, we'll pick up the uh, the no way out. We'll pick up the, the, the Shady Traveler. I have a feeling we're just going to land in blue-black as much as we tried to avoid it and stay away from it. Uh, might, it might, no, it's probably most definitely going to be a thing now. <laughs> as, we, as we get the 14th pick playable uh, along with the, the super late Corpse Cobble. I have a pretty strong notion we're going to be playing blue-black. <laughs> but, uh, frowns. Frowns it is. And so, what do we see ourselves out of, with out of this one? This is a really weak pack for blue, uh, blue-red and blue-black. I mean, if we're looking to play blue-red, I'm just going to take the, the play with fire here. Like, we can never play Catilda. That's unfortunate. We could um, look towards white, but, um, I mean, black is what appears to be open, but as far as these, like, blue and black cards go, dissipate, locked in the cemetery, rotten reunion, uh, we could just table these, and so I'm gonna go ahead and pick the play with fire in case we run into a, like, ridiculous run of red cards, but I'm quite under the impression that, uh, we're not going to be playing red here today, so I know it feels kind of odd to be taking uh, a red card when you don't intend on drafting red, uh, but uh, I think all of those blue cards will come back as uh, as, as playable. And then, all right, how are we going to handle ourselves here? Uh, I, I think, I mean, it sucks. There's the Moonrager Slash, but I, I think we're probably just needing to take one of these black cards. The one I want the least out of these would be the Vampire Interloper, so I'm going to come in and take the Champion of the Perished. Uh, we, we have a lot of these zombie themes kind of coming together. Um, and I feel like we'll table one of these strong playables between Siege, Zombie, Ecstatic, Awakener, or Startle. Unfortunate um, Moonrager Slash rolling around, but I think this will be fine. Okay, well, pretty weak set of cards. I think we're just stuck with the Startle here. I don't like Vengeful Strangler unless we're playing White-Black. Uh, if you don't have the means to just, like, sacrifice this thing off, it's not particularly good. Uh, and we aren't aggressive enough for this to be, like, really interesting when it's on board. And so I'm going to come in and pick up the Zombie Generator, uh, grab the Startle out of this pack. Reasonable red in the Ambusher, but I, th I think we're, st we're still pretty fine to just be away, <laughs> away from red. Oh, we are seeing a lot of Evolving Wilds roll around, though. So let me see here. Let's get these red cards out. You're fine. Grafted Identity's here. Uh, my pile's got messed up. Startle here. Our curve is awful. Uh, that is a fact. We need to pick up some early plays if we can, but I'm not picking up the Interloper. This one either comes down to the Shady Traveler or the Otherworldly Gaze, uh, and I'm actually just going to pick the Gaze here. Um, I really want to be seeing if we can't run this Delver of Secrets, and uh, the, the Shady Traveler is good, but uh, it's going to be kind of fillery here, whereas I, I think we're going to be able to uh, make use of the, the otherworldly gaze. 
All right, oh kitty, you need <laughs> you need them pets. Need them pets bad. All right, all right. So this is another pretty weak pack. Uh, I, I think we need to pick up some kind of late game here in the in the Blood Tithe Collector. Uh, it, it's fairly meh, but uh, we got to have something in here. I'm not a huge fan of Novice Occultist in these formats. Okay, a Blood Stitch Scab, sure. It's pretty late zombie cards with both the Scab and the Falcon Abomination, but uh, I think we have pretty decent zombie combos coming together here. Gale Drifter, okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can't fix our piles real quick as we have an easy pick in the Gale Drifter. We're not playing red. Startle's getting played. Otherworldly Gaze can move over to our probably playing. I'll get these red cards out of here. I'm running, running out of space. Red card. Oh my gosh, kitty, get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, play with fire. Okay, okay, I think we're fine. Alrighty, good. And a hobbling zombie. We have a bunch of no way outs, and so we don't need the hobbling zombies at this point. We could have had a big stack of old air and ambushers, but that's not the way, not the way our deck came together today. This out of here. Rotten reunion will be fine. Still trying to manage this. <laughs> okay, secrets of the key can go. That's a little bit better. That's a little better. Okay. So yeah, Rotten Reunion, a uh, decent chance we'll play the Rotten Reunion. We do need some amount of zombie generation. Siege zombie table, that's beautiful. Let's see what else we get. Duress is not going to get played. Uh, Shady Traveler we would prefer to have over the Interloper. The Interloper is uh, something that wants to be in an aggressive deck, which we're just not doing here. Rejuvenator. And the last one. I give you them pets. I know you need them top-notch pets, kitty. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, as far as this deck goes, um, our our mid-to-late game creatures are good, right? We have this nice uh, collection of kind of zombie generation and flyers and big late-game plays with things like Corpse Cobble. Uh, the, the things we need to be picking up are early game plays and actual removal spells. Uh, we have the Grafted Identity as our only removal. Uh, the the Revenge, Revenge of the Drowned is okay, but um, we need to be picking up something. Uh, and then here we have an interesting one in uh, uh, a Seize the Storm. We didn't pick up two Evolving Wilds, so it's kind of meh. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to pull off a Seize the Storm in this deck, but it, it's here. It would have been neat if that uh, was available. But uh, we look, there's a Siphon Insight, which I'm kind of okay with. We don't have too many card advantage cards at this point. Uh, it's not like super powerful here, and we can probably get ourselves away from playing like Otherworldly Gaze. Uh, otherwise, it's just like Gale Drifter or Digraph Horde. I don't think we need either of those. And then hopefully we can table the, uh, there was a, a Siege Zombie in that pack. Uh, hopefully that can come back and fill in our two drop space. Alrighty, well, not too much for us here. We don't need Bat Whispers. Our four drops are already pretty good. Uh, I, I think the, the Dreadhound is an upgrade over the Blood Tithe Collector. I don't think we ever play both, uh, but this isn't a pack that really adds anything to our deck. It's a little unfortunate. We'll just stick him in the expensive pile here. Um, I think we're kind of stuck tating, taking Fading Hope. Um, I would be okay with a second Organ Hoarder, but... Uh, it's it's a little expensive. I, I mean, I guess we do have some of these like self mill strategies going. Uh, we can mill. Um, I'm looking at kind of like what our flashback spells would be. Uh, there's the court the dreadhound as well, but we've got the corpse cobble, siphon insight, uh, and the other early gaze. So we only have three at this point. I'm still just kind of on board with organ hoarder. It's so tough for me to pass these things. <laughs> They're so so exceptionally good. Oh, there's a gem. Look at all these. The the scab, the organ hoarder, and the siege zombie. Wow, that's pretty bonkers. These scabs make the organ hoarder so much more powerful as well, uh, getting getting the, the bonus attack on the zombie. Okay, here's a Geist Wave. Uh, we need the, uh, the interaction more than anything here. Uh, I think that's fine. We have four three drops, so we don't really need Shady Traveler. I don't feel like we really need Mysterious Tome either. Between having Organ Hoarder and Siphon Instite, our, our card advantage is just good enough. Uh, so I think I'm just going to go with the Shady Traveler here, in case we would rather uh, have a creature. Our, our card advantage at this point is, is completely fine. Oh, Jesus. More Organ Hoarders? <laughs> okay. There is, though, an Evolving Wilds. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not really uh, opposed to playing 
three organ hoarders. It's it's not too much. We could look to start cutting gale drifters at that point, but it is a kind of excessive amount of four drops. I think I want to pick up the evolving wilds just in the event that uh, some of these red cards table. Uh, your very beautiful crawl from the cellar. This is one of the things that we were lacking. Uh, that'll play exceptionally well with what we're doing. And then this would have been the pack with the um, uh, with the the red spell. Didn't table, but it's okay. We could add in another Gale Drifter. If we could kind of potentially get these Gale Drifters in our graveyard. We don't have a, a ton of mill stuff, but I mean, we have the Organ Hoarders and the other Worldly Gaze if we want to try. Uh, but our curve is a bit of a mess here. All the mysterious tomes happening today. All right. Take the rare. <laughs> I don't think we need jack o' lantern today. We're not going. We're not going to splash any of these red cards. Um, okay. Locked in the cemetery is actually pretty nice. I'm never uh, excited about locked in the cemetery, but we passed on that eaten alive. We didn't see a defense trade in this draft. Uh, we didn't see any of the uncommon removals, and so uh, gotta gotta have something. Okay, okay, so yeah, I don't think we end up playing the red. The play with fire, the Vadric, uh, none of these seem too interesting. I mean, I could, if, if I was going to play anything, I think I would see like the argument for Galvanic Iteration, and I wouldn't like really be opposed to it if, say, we picked up that Jack-O-Lantern there at the end, and then with the two Evolving Wilds. That that should be kind of enough mana fixing, but uh, we're, we're not going to play uh, Vadric. We don't have a ton of good cards for the Galvantic Iteration. I, I think it's fine to just let that go. Um, okay, I, I'm happy. We don't need anything out of the sideboard real quick. Uh, to, to get these things moving here, we've got 17 creatures. I think the Delver of Secrets is going to be a, uh, a pretty quick removal, although I do like it being cheap. Um, yeah, get out of here, kitty. Uh, so let's see. How are we going to do this? We do have, I mean, pretty decent self-mill type stuff, though, right? We have uh, the Dreadhound and the Organ Hoarder as activators. We have the Otherworldly Gaze. Uh, and then as far as flashback spells go, uh, we have the Siphon Insight, Corpse Cobble, Reunion, Crawl from the Cellar, and three Gale Drifters. I, I can see uh, potentially playing that, but I, I think we're going to be looking more towards like the zombie theme here. And so like uh, I'm initially looking to say like take out the Delver, take out the, the Collector. At least with 15 creatures, we can drop one Gale Drifter. Uh, and then the otherworldly gaze can go if we're not playing the Delvers. That's kind of a high risk, high reward thing if you pick up two Delvers. Uh, I think we're stuck playing Locked in the Cemetery. Kind of looking to pull out one more creature. Uh, because we do have Corpse Cobble down here. Uh, and we have pretty reasonable uh, zombie generation. If we're going to play Rotten Reunion, two No Way Outs, uh, uh, and then the Revenge of the Drowned, I, I think that's okay. I have to play the Locked in the Cemetery. So like a second Gale Drifter. I think that's fine. Kind of like, well, I think I would rather play two Gale... Let's do this. Let's take out a Shady Traveler and put the second Gale Drifter back in. Uh, it's a it's a little expensive, uh, but I, I think we can handle that with our curve. Uh, that's okay. We need one more to go. Kind of want to hang on to the Rotten Reunion. Again, we have a lot of this self-mill. Um, the 13 creatures. It's kind of low, but kind of deceptive in that we have like a Grafted Identity and the Corpse Cobble. Uh, and I don't think we can get rid of the Rotten Reunion. This is close. The Drowned. Maybe we do have to cut the locked in the cemetery, but then it's just like we have our, our interactivity package is the one grafted identity, the one revenge of the drowned, and the locked in the cemetery. I think we need to cut the no way out. Playing two of them can be kind of greedy. Alrighty. Well, I think that's where we're going to land. Looks decent. Nice, nice zombie package. I'm not super happy with our lack of early game. We only have uh, the four early game plays. We let that get away from us a little bit, but... Um, I think we've got a, got a reasonable deck here. All right, so let's get to battle. Yeah, I mean, not that bad. Uh, when We, we, we could have had... A, a, I would have been a lot happier if we picked up that Eaten Alive, and then I don't think we missed anything out of that first pack. I don't remember what the collection of cards was, but it was like 
obsessive astronomer, root coil creeper, the blue whites disturb guy. That's probably what would, would have sent us down a pretty powerful path if we'd taken that blue white disturb thing. But uh, I feel I feel kind of bad as well. I guess as like I was just trying to stay away from like the the common blue black and blue white decks, and then we just ended up drafting blue black. But somebody somebody was drafting red in that. It was it was pretty clearly not. Uh, super open there. So, all right, not a particularly strong start, but uh, we do at least have a turn two play in the Siphon Insight, and perhaps that will find us something to do here. All right, bring that Thunder Disturb deck. Uh, I hate these artworks. I don't know what's happened to where so many people have gotten these ugly arts, and I hate to say that for the, the artist's sake, but this artwork is ugly. <laughs> I can't stand I just do not like this this theme that they've taken in these in these pictures. Alright, jeez, Adeline. I took your good rare, my friend. Bro with Denik and Adeline, jeez. But she should be pretty good here. Uh, we're, we're gonna get to uh, make these tokens, start getting our like drafted identity kind of cards going. Uh, instead of generating zombies, we'll just be generating humans. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this. Yes, I want to target it. Uh, I, I, we need to draw land. Now we got these sweet Adeline combos where she <laughs> she boosts all our cards with the humans and with all the zombies. Ah, oh, boo! I mean, if he puts it on top of his deck, we can just take her again with the the Siphon Insight. Not completely opposed to that idea. Man, we I mean we don't we don't have any other plays anyways. I think it's it's safer to just pull the Adeline back than it is to uh... Well what does this do? Does it put them on the bottom of their library? Exile one of them face down, put the other on the bottom of the library. Okay. So I'm just gonna take his island. We gotta we gotta find something to do here. But I still think we're okay. Like, I'm not opposed to locking Denik in the cemetery. Um, don't really do a lot of graveyard targeting here anyways. Um, and getting a shutdown on him would be okay. Sure. Just gotta worry about getting tempoed here. I don't think we're ever gonna prevent more than three damage with the with the token. That's fine. We could look to just graft at identity, Denik. Um, if... How bad is that? I mean, if he doesn't have a bounce spell and we can use him to gain a bunch of life, uh, that should be pretty nice. We just have to have something go right, though. I mean, if he... It, it doesn't matter what play we make. Like, if we just drop uh, Locked in the Cemetery Falcon Abomination and he has a spell or something, we just need him to just have, like, uh, units and not a lot of interactivity here. And we should be able to come back. But it, it, the only downside to this is if he makes some kind of like tempo play, the, then we're really struggling. Like that would have made it a little bit better to play the Locked in the Cemetery and the Falcon Abomination. But All right, well, let's see if his plan was to hit this with a Geist Wave. Pretty 
pretty bad if this fails. Um, because we we can't locked in the cemetery because of the shield guys. Maybe we should have should have not played the locked in the cemetery, but or not played the no way out. But I mean, if his plan was something like a um, flare of faith, then I think we're okay. Blocking. Ooh. Why? I wanted to attack because in the world where he has, like, where he draws a bounce spell or draws a locked in the cemetery or drops a, a Cathar commando, uh, we, we just lose our unit and don't get to gain the health. But uh, it seem, seems as though he did not expect his unit to uh, to be dying there. All right, we are right back in it now. Quite good. Sure. All right, so let's just spend as much mana as we can. I mean, the downside to this is we can play the Organ Hoarder, but um, uh, we can't play, like, two cards this turn. We can't play Falcon Abomination and another card. Uh, so maybe we just go with the Flyer. The Organ Hoarder isn't super strong on this board, and we don't really need to be drawing the cards. All right, and then the kind of the thing I th feel like we need to look out for now is we can protect our grafted identity with the Geist Wave. This can return uh, permanent star hand, not creatures. And so um, I think it, it, it could be useful. If he's drawn like a Flare of Faith here, then that's kind of whatever. But I think we would like to keep uh, that mana available if we can. No blocks. All right, we're getting there. We, we've clawed ourselves back into this one. Just win the game here with the with the Geist Wave. We could also look to say um, Geist Wave, the Grafted Identity, and then Grafted Identity, the Soul Griff Guide. Seems a little unnecessary. If we play the Dreadhound. We lose out on our ability to uh, uh, to to use the the Geist Wave. I don't like that. Okay, he he shouldn't be able to get like particularly good blocks on Denik. He can put the Soul Griff Guide on the Gale Drifter, but then the rest of his blocks are going to kind of suck. Um, and we should just start to crush through here. There's a world where we also get a kill by flashing a Rotten Reunion 
uh, into play to boost our champion to the Perished. Four, seven, eight, nine. So there's no Flare of Faith here either. You'd probably put the the Silversmith in front of Den Denek and Flare of Faith if that was going to be a thing. Looking good. There it is. GG, my man. Ooh, platinum. <laughs> All right, not bad. So yeah, you all follow the world of fantasy football. Exciting day. I guess it would have been two days ago by the time this comes out. For us, for us Chiefs, we were denied the uh, the State Farm Bowl. Aaron Rodgers out there paying the Patrick Price on the COVID. Last year when this happened, uh, Mahomes had the hurt ankle. So we're, we're two years out from the State Farm Bowl. I don't know what's better, the Patrick Price or the Rodgers rate, but no one gets to no one gets to pay it this year. Unless we get to the Super Bowl. Maybe that's, that would be like State Farm's wet dream. <laughs> It'd be the the Mahomes Rogers Super Bowl. But uh interesting stuff happening out there in the in the lands of football. I had the, the this uh, speaking of football and the the dumpster fire of one of my teams uh, get to play get to play with old uh, Jordan Love this week not not particularly happy about it uh, that that league has ridiculous scoring and uh, it's playing with Russell Wilson Russell Wilson's out picked up Matt Ryan Calvin Ridley left and he Matt Ryan got his hand stomped on had a horrible week last week so we're playing Jordan Love until hopefully until hopefully until uh, uh, Russell Wilson comes back next week. Okay, I pushed a button. Stop auto passing. Fuck me. I don't know how to stop that. I guess I should have just clicked the auto pass button again. <sighs> okay. I mean, I think we're still fine. Uh, I don't know what opponent's actually doing here, but uh, that's frustrating. Let's just go ahead and go with the No Way Out, or the, the Shady Traveler. Th this would feel much nicer if we were just dropping No Way Outs on this guy. But Spectral Adversary, sure. Well, this guy's certainly playing the Flash game on us. It's a dude. I don't. I don't know if we can recover out of this one now. We're getting tempoed real hard. I guess it's not a ton of damage. The shipwreck sifters only deals one damage, but need to find this land real bad. We're gonna have to quit attacking with the siege zombie. It probably shouldn't have been attacking with it anyways. Um, Knowing that he's essentially out of cards, we just need to we just need to play a don't lose until you win kind of game. Well, we can buy a turn or two. I mean, we have the Geist Wave and the Startle and the Revenge of the Drowned, and so we have a bit of time. Uh, no attacks. 
he's going to flash back the rotten. Well, he could flash back the rotten reunion, and uh, uh, I want to have a blocker for both creatures. Ooh, almost missed those siege zombie triggers. <laughs> almost, almost. So we don't lose if he if he has a removal spell here. So I think we're safe to add the Gale Drifter. If this thing sticks, uh, th then we're looking incredibly good. If he attacks, it's kind of worrisome. Uh, if his play was like a startle, uh, it looks like he's about to come in with it. Uh, I don't like falling to one against black, but kind of kind of is what it is. All right, but I mean, we've got com complete control of this game now. Um, well, felt felt better until he played that thing, but <laughs> we have we have some amount of control of this game. I guess we should uh, we should switch ourselves to saying. Interesting. Why would he not attack with both units? That's so strange. So strange. Uh, I guess we'll just take the rotten reunion here. We're about to about to go off with these zombies. Do we actually get a good attack this turn? Nah. That seems a little greedy. Uh, okay. I mean, we can discard both of our spl our flashback spells here, and we aren't missing out on too much. <laughs> oh, shit. We should have done a point of damage, though. I hope the game doesn't come down to that, but we definitely should have done a point of damage and taken them to eight. say so our, our zombies on the ground are pretty close to just ending the game anyways but a little sloppy right we wouldn't have had to have uh, tapped a blocker there to uh, to get in for the the damage Whew, cool taking them down getting the getting the heartbeat going it's like playing those Teemo games gets the gets the butt cheek squeezing clinching the b-hole <laughs> observing the talk of the deck I uh, do not miss playing against Teemo decks I, I kind of enjoyed playing them but uh, that was always such a frustrating mechanic the the puff cap mechanic and just kind of hoping and dreaming whatever <laughs> was was the, the RNG was going to hit but in terms of the puff, cap, puff cap mechanic I do love that uh that's a thing that you're able to do in digital card games. Uh, this hand's not that exciting, but I'm going to keep it. We're on the play, so we can kind of make up for not having a big turn two play. But yeah, that's what like initially drew me to Hearthstone, and uh, what I, I really like about digital games is that uh, there, there's cards like the Puff Cap Mechanic where you're attaching an ability to a card. Uh, 
something you could never do in, in paper magic. I guess you could you could sleeve your deck and slide a bunch of paper <laughs> in there to to indicate something like that has happened, but uh, it's not not realistic. All right, blue green guy. Let's let's see if you got that shadow be sighting for us next turn. Slogurk or Dole for dominance? Can we uh, get land into our graveyard? We have some mill things. Uh, I'm kind of interested in like the duel for dominance, uh, but uh, our creatures tend to be like smaller than our opponent's creatures. Probably just need the removal spell. Our removal's so bad. Could have looked to get getting the the shady traveler on board. Uh, because we can like duel for dominance down the unblinking observer with the shady traveler and have it not die. But I, I feel like there's a really high chance that we're going to be playing Revenge of the Drowned on a Shadow Beast sighting. And then if he doesn't have the Shadow Beast sighting, then I definitely want the Falcon Abomination, and then I definitely feel better about uh, where this game is going. So I, I think that's completely fine. Just do nothing. Are we okay with getting the Shady Traveler counterspelled? I think so. Maybe we should have just played that Traveler last turn, because we would have, like, another good turn of just, like, passing to flip to Knight and then being able to, like, Siphon Insight something away. Uh, don't mind if I do. Do a little of that aggro thing everybody's talking about. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes a spell. Is it going to rise the ants? Nope. Okay. Slightly annoying, but not the end of the world. I think here I just want to attack with the Shady Traveler. Flip it to Knight. And then return the Broodweaver on their turn with Revenge of the Drowned. Um, Shady Traveler has Menace. And we might get some kind of double cool play if uh, <laughs> if they get too greedy with, uh, with the, their cards. Is he lining up something else? You got a duel for dominance? It's like, oh, this would be so big if he was going to uh, going to duel for dominance. I don't think this counter spells the blessing, though. It has the two targets. Yeah, our guy's still tapped. We're getting close. Uh, go go wide strategies should be decent here. Uh, he's never attacking. Take it back. <laughs> what do I know? What do I know? So close to dead. Why would you ever be attacking here? He's going to just re-add his Broodweaver? Okay. Can flash back like a Winterthorn Blessing with the, the, the tapping the Unblinking Observer, but... 
counter non-creature spell unless the controller pays three. So what are we doing here? Let's say, all right, we'll tap, we'll tap the siege zombie. That has been done. Now, do we want to get rid of any of this stuff? Uh, we have this duel for dominance that we can use, and we have the Geist Wave. Uh, I'm kind of looking towards just playing duel for dominance. Um, so if we're going to do that, because uh, there's kind of like two problems with this board. He can... Uh, I, I think we need to get rid of this Malevolent Hermit. I don't want this countering any of our spells. That's really fucking annoying. And then next turn, we can just like bounce the Eccentric Farmer or something. But maybe we'll... I, I don't like the double block that he can get on our Shady Traveler, but uh, we want to use the Traveler this turn so it doesn't have, like, this Duel for Dominance damage on it next turn. Can he even double block our Traveler? He could. But if he double blocks our Traveler, then we get a good Geist Wave. Real close. He probably has to play the Winterthorn Blessing on our Falcon Abomination this turn. Well, I guess he gets a flyer out of his dude that we just killed. So we might we might be switching into the Siege Zombie plan, but I think we're okay here. No Winterthorn Blessing. Okay. The Shadow Beast sighting. <laughs> what you got for me? Winterthorn Blessing? Does that, does that get us a kill? I know we can't flash it back, but... Uh, if we say blessing, uh, yeah, we can blessing the Falcon Abomination. Okay. Okay, so put a counter on a creature you control. Falcon Abomination, creature you don't control. Falcon Abomination. <laughs> well, let's get it in there. Got him. All right, round three victory. Boom. All right, all right, yeah. The wild day in the football, the Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, the the stories I have about Odell, last season, uh, he was a, a member of my squad, uh, doing terribly as usual at the Browns. Um, I think this is kind of the same as the last one. We can hang on to these on the play. And then I, I managed to trade him to somebody that recognizes the name Odell Beckham Jr. And then the next week, he immediately tore his ACL. Uh, and so that... That felt good from a fantasy perspective. I, I hate seeing NFL players get injured, but from a fantasy perspective, that was spectacular. Um, and then I, I don't know when I drafted him this year. It was some ridiculous round. I might have even picked him up off waivers. I don't know, but uh, he's had a wonderful, wonderful spot on my bench all season. Um, can't imagine uh, he's he's gonna he's, he's gonna see any playing time. <laughs> so. All right, back to the game. Here comes the siege zombie. All right, come on. Consider, sure. Come here. This cat's just meowing at me like she wants to hang out. And then walks underneath the wheels of my chair. So 
Come here. All right. She's done. She's not hanging out. All right, so let's get back to the game. Away from the fantasy footballs. Away from the... Uh, <laughs> away from the cats. Let's see what we can do here. Shipwreck Sifters shut down our Seed Zombie. Interesting seeing double Shipwreck Sifters out of a blue-green deck, but to each their own, I guess. Um, let's see. We don't have too much going on here. Oh, a no play. That's nice. Get them big stalking predator damages in. It's gonna be a shadow beast. I think we want to take the removal over something like Broodweaver. Broodweaver is a little scary as well. Uh, if, it, if it dies or something, then uh, I don't necessarily want uh, that token rolling around. I guess we get the token though, right? He's going to silver bolt our predator, uh, and then we're going to bring it back with the craw from the cellar. Whoa! It's waiting all day, huh? Interesting. Sure. So many shipwreck sifters. I, I think we need to just go ahead and take down his big one. Uh, I mean, it's, it's tough for them to be discarding a spirit, though, right? I don't know. He's not doing anything else. Feels like kind of a turd of a clear shot, but if he has a 3-4 on board, it's going to be fairly annoying. That's fine. But, it, I mean, it, realistically, though, like, what's he going to be discarding? There's going to be a, uh, a fourth Shipwreck Sifters in his deck, or a um, Sky Rider Spirit or something. It's like, it's pretty tough for him to have one to discard. Oh, what up, kitty? Glad to see that, that switch got flipped, though. Here comes the dog. Oh. Let's see how big we can get with this startle. <laughs> As you say, he's probably going to like line up good blocks on it, but and startle if things get uh, oh shit we ordered that the wrong way that's silly we, we should have been killing the 4-4 four four. oh we get to do it this way now no uh uh that's stupid okay Alright, let's spew off all of these spells. Get the scab back as well. Yeah, we got a pretty dominating position here, but should have definitely killed off that Shadow Beast token. Yeah, these are some top notch scratches. <laughs> Kitty loves some good scratches. Alright, well, we can't attack on the ground anymore. We, uh, so let's just come in with the Gale Drifter. Uh, we're going to make him discard his hand as well. That's most certainly happening. Uh, a way out. Very interesting. Okay, and then we should be able to just end this next turn. Maybe. Maybe not now that he's gained some health, but we have this Dreadhound to uh, 
deal additional damages. Alright, let me give this another read. When ever a creature dies or a creature is put into a graveyard from a library, each opponent loses one life. Okay, let's just start with the Organ Hoarder. Uh, I don't think he can make double blocks here, but uh, th this attack should be lethal. Alright, alright, let's see. Yeah, do we do we fix it? We get <laughs> we get the kitties latched on. Damn, some good scratches right there. That's the good stuff. This is the dumb cat. She's very not not intelligent. She's a little sweetheart. She's uh, I don't know, probably not like two standard deviations from the mean, but <laughs> she. She's certainly on the on the left half of the bell curve in terms of intelligence, but uh, she's such a super sweetheart. <laughs> Alrighty, well that's a curve. Uh, we haven't got to see the deck do stuff like this yet, but uh, I can assure you hands like this are incredibly powerful. So let's go ahead and keep that one. Well done, kitty. Alright. Back to back to my beautiful mug. Let's see against blue black with a no play. All right, here come the damages. Get my zombie bird on the board. More damages. Ooh, that, that can't be good, my friend. That cannot be good. Alright. So how do we feel about this one? If we add the Gale Drifter... Uh, that may, you know, or I mean, we add the organ hoarder. Basically, announces that we can't play any cards because we don't have any mana. Uh, but that would mean he can't kill our champion of the perished unless he double blocks it. Uh, otherwise, that's that, that's like his only good block, right? This this token isn't doing anything. So let's let's add the organ hoarder. Got two islands, so we'll pick up the swamp. Did we do something wrong? Did we not get a bonus off the... One, two... Oh, we did? I just didn't math good? <laughs> pretty pretty typical. Alright. Sure. Right, we still have the, the commanding position in this one. A zombie, sure. So if we attack with everything, uh, he has to block the organ hoarder with something. Uh, but at worst, like say, he puts larger zombie in front of organ hoarder, gale drifter in front of the scab. I guess that's still fine. It's too low. We have to we have to bring some thunder out here. Do we want to no way out, or do we want to Gale Drifter? The, the no way out does put the zombie on the board. Um, but let's go with the Gale Drifter. 
seems a, a, a little more unlikely for him to have two answers to two flyers, uh, as opposed to maybe he has, uh, you know, a, a bounce spell and he draws a cheap card and can block all of our dudes. All right, hit the five wins. What up, bud? Come on. More kitties, here we go. Fix that camera again. Kitty number two. <laughs> this is the dumb one's son. Uh, he also not very smart. He's, he's my favorite, though. He's the one I kind of described. Like, everybody has that friend, like, you wonder why you hang out with him, like... You know, you'll be at a party and they think it's funny to, like, hit you in the balls or <laughs> whatever. Like, a, they, they don't have a lot of, like, redeeming qualities. And you, you're really curious as to why, you know, you hang out with this dude that gets, like, super drunk and you have to babysit him or they hit you in the balls and stuff like that. But then, you know, you have that day where, like, you're out and, uh, like, you have a flat tire and you call, like, five or six people and nobody answers the phone. And then you call that dude and he's like shit yeah be there in a minute like <laughs> they're just like always there uh, and that is what turns out to be their redeeming qualities that's that's what this guy's deal is he's kind of a turd he's a little bit of a <laughs> he's a little bit of a shit but uh, he's he's always he's always good for the the redeeming qualities <laughs> yeah it's that other kitty's the other kitty's son uh I like I like to say that uh, she was trying to call the herd with this one. Uh, there was a, a a bunch of little kids at the house uh, shortly after she had given birth to these kitties, and uh, hang on, I'm kind of looking at this here. Like, what if we play the scab trade into something, and then just start to crawl from the cellar things right back? I kind of like this, uh, but no, she was like hiding all of the kittens in the wall, and this was the first one that she hid. Uh, and uh, so I always said that she was just thinning the herd to get get rid of him, but he was a tubby little fucker. She was saving the one that was most likely to survive. He's still a tubby little fucker, but uh, anyways, back to the action. Oh, he's gone. What can we do here? So, I mean, I would like to graft an identity something at some point at some time uh it's not really in the cards right now but his board isn't that scary otherwise let's just play for a little bit of value with the organ hoarder um, it contests the shadow beast and i think this is okay I i'm gonna let the siphon insight go uh, we can flash it back at some point Pff, might need to be applying locked in the cemetery it should be good as removal against uh against blue green All right, gotta quit focusing on the kitties. Focus on the, on the Magic the Gatherings. People are probably more interested in the kitties than our mediocre gameplay. But <laughs> we'll see. Organ Horde is fine. Wow, he, he passed on Root Coil Creeper and Revenge of the Drowned. So where do we find ourselves here? This startle's not very good. I'm thinking that we just want to add the Siege Zombie. We can start doing Siege Zombie stuff after this turn. Uh, we'll play Siphon Insight on their turn and see if we can't uh, uh, get into a, a little bit better board where we can start to use Grafted Identities and such. I mean, his board not giving us a compelling reason to do anything. He makes no play. Interesting. He's got something. <laughs> it's stalling. Stalling for some reason. Curious what that is. I mean, he had to have picked up a good card off of the Organ Hoarder. Uh, that's that's for certain. If he's discarding Revenge of the Drowns. Uh, we'll see. More 
Revenge of the Drowns. Okay. Pretty timely Rotten Reunion. Let's just go ahead and pop the Shadow Beast sighting. Um, if he go into the next turn and he plays a land, we don't have the timing to, to get rid of that. So I think that's okay. Um, now the question is, do we want to say, like, play Locked in the Cellar? I don't, I'd really rather prefer to be, like, rot Locked in the Cellaring this Covetous Castaway. But we can also just hit it with a, um, we, we have plays. Like, like having plays. I think if we attack with the Organ Hoarder, it's just going to trade with his Organ Hoarder. But that's okay. And if he blocks with the Castaway, we can pop it with the, um, the Revenge of the Drowned. Or the, the Rotten Reunion, I should say. What is he holding on to? Interesting. Okay. Let's just run it all out. I'm very whelmed by the uh, the Nebelgast Intruder. <laughs> very whelmed. Not not intimidating whatsoever. Okay. How does this guy work? In terms of like, we're going to steal it. Put a slime counter on another creature. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna take control of it, but then he's, uh, he's going to stay slimed. Not too big of a deal. He's only got one card. All these attacks should be safe. He can get his Covetous Castaway like dead, and if the extent of his play next turn is to flash back the Castaway, then then by all means that's great. Uh, but yeah, this looks pretty good now. Okay. I was hoping to get to Sludge Monster some of our little zombies, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Wow, such aggression. Such aggression. Alright, we didn't draw the land. I was really hoping to get to Revenge of the Drowned this token and then... Uh, uh, rotten Reunion out the Shadow Beast sighting, but that's not going to be a play. So I think we do want to go ahead and Rotten Reunion, and then I'm just going to look to Corpse Cobble next turn. We are missing out on our opportunity to potentially... Uh, no way out is only card, but I think this is fine. Didn't want to come in. <laughs> Didn't want to come in with your ground-based units, huh? All right, all right. I'm going to add Champion of the Parish just in case we want to go ahead and Revenge of the Drowned. I would like to get that uh, that unit 
if possible. He has to double block. This thing has menace. So I'd say his Covetous Castaway and the Bait Hook Angler are going to be coming in. Uh, but we'll start to wear down this board pretty quickly. Epogast has intruded. Sure. Okay. Get that sludge monster back in the deck. I would assume he'd be sending back in some some Revenge of the Drowns as well. This is going to be his best answer to a um, gigantic monster. Bergen Hoarder, Sludge Monster locked in the cemetery. Sure. Then do we ever just win the game next turn? Uh, I mean, I think we're pretty close, right? We're going to bounce this Castigator. He has to put a double block on the big boy, so that's only going to leave him with one blocker next turn. Let's say he blocks the Organ Hoarder. I think we've got it. Definitely have it now. Okay. Got him. Platinum, tier two. Getting there. We're almost back into Mythic. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure we should be able to get back into Mythic before... Um, before Crimson Val comes out. Uh, I guess that depends on how much I play. I've kind of dropped from playing uh, like two and three drafts a day, just to like one draft a day and a bunch of Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Uh, but I, uh, we'll, we'll see as, uh, as we get closer to uh, the release. Let's see if I really push for it or not. It'll be, I mean, the release is in two weeks. So we'll see. Also, I haven't decided. I do want. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna stream on the release day. Eh, we can keep this, but um, I might just do it on YouTube. Not. I'm not 100 sure yet. I haven't quite decided if we'll uh, carry it out on Twitch or uh, if we'll just try to mess with YouTube. I haven't messed with the YouTube live or what, whatever they call it, but. Um, the, the opportunity is there. It seems like they're, they're starting to push it more and more, and I have to assume that if you've uh, found my work here on YouTube, then you're at least already familiar with YouTube and perhaps YouTube Live, and so we'll see. I haven't, I haven't made such big life decisions just yet. <laughs> but this is fine. This is a very non-aggressive draw coming out of a Boros deck, uh, and so... I, I'm feeling pretty decent with how this is, has shaped up. Oh boy, oh boy. Interesting. We call that some value. I'm not, I'm not usually looking to play a value game against a Boros deck, but... Oh, is that what the problem was? Were you playing blue-red and splashing white or something? Blue-white, splash-red, and you just didn't have good mana? Well, uh, we, can, we can take this down with a startle. The question is, do you... Yeah, I think we should... I'm gonna say it's a, it's a little cheaper. I, you know, we can't get like the Falcon Abomination play going, but this is just, this is just gonna be such a lethal once we Geist wave whatever their play is. Oh no! 
Oh, our traveler, our traveler flipped back. We played too many cards. <laughs> but where are we at? Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We'll be at twelve if he only plays one card. Opponent has more creatures than make dudes. If the opponent has more cards, draw a card. So he's not going to get to draw a card. Assume this would be a double block on Champion of the Perished. Then we'll get in for uh, 7 plus 3. Get in for 10. I guess you could double block Organ Hoarder to prevent another point of damage, but... I guess there's also the opportunity to go wide on the blocks and prevent 5 if you feel like you can really start churning out cards now, but I have to assume that he's like really limited on mana. Uh, he's, you know, just got a handful of blue cards, but can only play one card a turn. And as we'd seen recently, this really weirded me out <laughs> with people playing a bunch of Burn Down the House. Uh, Dreadhound survives that, so that's always a nice bonus. He tapped on his graveyard. I wonder if this is going to be like an ardent, uh, whatever the archivist is, the red archivist, and then return Sunset Revelry and play both. It buys quite a bit of time. <laughs> Count those mana. You got six. You got six manas. Dude's already in Diamond. He's been doing all kinds of drafting. Look at you. We were in Mythic. It, it, it sent us down to... Uh... Sure. We're just lethal now, right? We get plus two from the Falcon Abomination and we get him come in for f uh, six. Got him. Cool. Nice little 7 0. The 7 0 victory. Uh, feeling pretty good. I like getting 7 0s. Much better than 7 1s or 0 3s. <laughs> for, for those of y'all not familiar, it's a little bit better. But alrighty, yeah, let's get this, let's get this draft pulled up. We'll talk about it uh, a little bit more. Um, so let's see. Okay, so yeah, in terms of decks, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's, there's nothing uh, too uh, unique uh, uh, about the, the blue-black deck we've assembled here today. It's a pretty standard um, Zombies deck. And so I, I think at least as far as the draft was concerned, uh, we definitely landed much more on the blue side um, as opposed to the black side, which tends to put you towards like a Flyers deck. Um, because you're, you're usually, the, the way your games will kind of sequence themselves is uh, you'll, you'll drop some you know early game dudes, uh, you'll lock up the ground, and then just hit with Falcon Abominations and Gale Drifters. Um, not, not too different from what happened here today. Um, the, the things I, I typically like to call out in these style of decks, at least, is uh, the, the um, what's your name? What's your name? The Shady Traveler usually carries his weight. Uh, and then if you don't have the likes of Shady Travelers, you can look towards something like Component Collectors. But again, you're usually just looking to stall out the board, have a little bit of card advantage, have a little bit of uh, removal, uh, and then take things over in the fairly classic uh, blue-black style. I mean, you can look for uh, some you know, kind of side strategies. We had a bit of self-mill. And we got to take advantage of it reasonably well uh, between having our, our organ hoarders and then 
uh, hit, hitting the likes of Corpse Cobble, Siphon Insight, uh, Rotten, then we managed to play Rotten Reunion, Crawl from the Cellar, uh, all of that pretty standard and reasonable. Uh, we did, you know, look for the opportunity to kind of go all in with the Delver of Secrets mill plan. Didn't come together. That's completely fine. But I, I think that's what I kind of really wanted to talk about as far as this deck goes. I mean, we're uh, is like six weeks, seven weeks, whatever, into this format. Everyone is really familiar with Blue Black at this point. Uh, but uh, the the thing that I thought was good here was, you know, we w- went out, out on a limb very early uh, trying to draft blue-red cards. Uh, you know, we, we talked about it. We'll get into the draft in a second. But, you know, we went out on a limb. We took some stretch picks on blue-red. Uh, we took some stretch picks on the Delver of Secrets. And then we still ended up with, like, 27 or 28 playables once we got to the uh, the deck-building section. Our deck was clearly powerful enough to 7-0 because that's what we did with it, um, and, and I don't feel like we were really missing out on too much. And so uh, you, you can't take you know a lot of chances in this format as far as drafting goes uh, and then just not get punished for it. And so we, we typically talk about this in terms of looking for red cards on the wheel. Uh, and so you know at, at pick six, you can take a, a Midnight Lightning Bolt over a marginally pl- marginally playable card in your deck, uh, and then if you do start to wheel those red cards like the Festival Crashers, the the Stolen Vitalities, then you got a big payoff. But if you miss, then you know you're not missing out on too much. You you passed up on a you know a twenty third decuttable quality card, and and the event that you got a super high powered seven o deck. Um, and so I, I thought that that was at least interesting in the draft that we did run into a couple spaces here to where you could pick up some really high-powered stuff. You know, we had some blue-red rares. We had the Delver of Secrets package. None of that came together, but at the end of the day, we didn't get punished for it. Uh, the, I think the big thing in those terms uh, and kind of where the, uh, the, the skill, if you will, in these drafts comes from was recognizing how, like, super open blue was uh, and, and kind of probably deducing that someone around us was in black. Um, I, I think those were the two big things. We could have been wrong uh, about some the person to our right being in black, but they most definitely weren't in blue. And so, yeah, uh, I, I thought this was, was fine. Uh, th- this is, you know, kind of a, a fantastic pack, pack to just take, you know, a really, uh, take, take a, a really high risk, high reward pack on. Uh, ideally, it wouldn't be as high risk, high reward as Vadric, because I just don't think he's that good. But if we do table the obsessive astronomer, this could be quite strong. Or uh, the 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 blue red superstar is here in stolen vitality, so we can get some kind of interesting pick nines. Um, but I, again, kind of my problem with these style of cards is I don't really like being forced into blue red. Like if I'm out here drafting the red cards, I kind of want to be really flexible is either into being like white red or blue red uh kind of the same thing applies with green i don't like being forced to start off in blue green i like to kind of be like oh hey i'm getting these like really like green cards maybe we'll play green today uh, and not just start out with root coil creepers uh that's something that um you know in pick two maybe pack two maybe we could get a pick nine because nobody's drafting simic but pack one we just don't really want to be starting off with that and so it was a little unfortunate I do concede here that this is a pretty easy uh, devoted graph keeper as your first pick. Uh, just a, a really strong Disturb card. Disturb is arguably the best deck in the format. Uh, we have a lot of cards that could potentially wheel out of this pack. Wouldn't be surprised if we got a Morning Patrol or Gavany Trapper or at worst a Homestead Courage back out of this one. Would have been the Homestead Courage Trapper package. Even <laughs> Revenge of the Drowned, hot damn. Uh, but uh, we we did draft Disturb in the previous video. We've drafted it multiple times over the past 10 videos, and so uh, I wanted to just try and do something a little different, so we landed with Vadric. Uh, pick two, very easy Grafted Identity. I'm curious what happened here. What uncommons are realistically better than Grafted Identity? Uh, and I think it's it's one of those, like, I wouldn't take a black removal spell over it. Had to have been... Um, had to have been the uh, Orsov opportunist. Uh, l- let me see. Let me pull that up real quick. Hang on. Okay, I got it pulled up on Scryfall. Like, I- I'm not sure what... Like, because you're not going to take a removal spell, right? You're not going to take a borrowed time over um, Grafted Identity. Uh, these cards here, like, none of the creatures here are particularly interesting. Like, it's just, like, removal spells are what you're particularly interested in here, right? Um not like Donhart Mentor, not good enough. 
Uh, none of these cards, like I could maybe in a stretch see an argument for dual craft trainer. No, <laughs> just just no. Uh, same thing applies to Gavany Dawnguard. Like right? if you're wanting to take something like foul play, then you just take the grafted identity. Hound Tamer. If green wasn't so horrible, I could see an argument for Infernal Grasp is the good black removal spell. Has to be morbid opportunist, right? Has to be morbid opportunist. And so that that was an extremely strange pack to me that they took the uncommon over grafted identity, but hey, I guess blue's going to be open, uh, and blue is arguably the best color in the set. And so, very interesting. I wonder if that person was, if you're just AFK, it, it takes the rare, right? So strange to me. I'd really like to know what that person took. But on to, on to pack three for drafting blue. Organ Hoarders are looking good. The rest of this pack, pretty weak. And so, looking looking pretty strong right here from the start. Uh, into pick four, we took our, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, where our deck ended up, we would have liked to have had this um, this eaten alive, but, you know, we thought we were probably drafting blue-red, uh, and then again, if you do end up with this deck with, like, two Delver of Secrets, sometimes you might even get three, because it goes around pretty late, uh, and then you pick up uh, the Otherworldly Journeys, I think that's the card, um, yeah, Otherworldly Gaze. Uh, where you're able to do kind of the self-mill stuff, uh, it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. And so, uh, again, we did miss out on an Eaten Alive here. Uh, I do think um, this is probably the pick, uh, but it is also, like, very easy to pick up a bunch of black removal. Like, uh, this was a very strange one as to where we didn't have multiple copies of Eaten Alive, Defense Straight, uh, Midnight Ambush. Like, there's just so many of them in this format. I, I think that this is actually pretty fine. And here, uh, we took the Galvanic Iteration. I feel like we tabled this Corpse Cobble, right? Like, pick 13 or so? Yeah, yeah, just just completely bonkers getting this on the way back. But, um, but yeah, I, I still think the Iteration is fine as we think we're drafting Blue-Red. There is, you know, the Festival Crashers of Note. None of that stuff tabled. It seemed like Red was pretty well cut. Uh, here, this was an accidental pick with the Secrets of the Key. Uh, kind of is what it is. Uh, uh, there's nothing in here that would have actually been decent in our deck. Uh, we probably should have looked to take the No Way Out uh, or the Hallowed Respite. There's definitely a world where if we're out here taking Delver of Secrets, we do end up in blue-white. Uh, and so one of these two is fine. Probably should have just taken the Hallowed Respite or the Flare of Faith. I don't think the Respite is very good. Uh, you tend to not have too many comes into play effects, um, and I'm not really interested in this card. But Nonetheless, we, we missed that pick there. Falcon Ab Abomination is super good in what we're doing. Uh, and then these things just continue to look good. Blue still very open. We're getting all these very late blue cards. Uh, and I think uh, the first pack was pretty fine. But with the, the, the 13th pick Corpse Cobble, 14th pick No Way Out, it's just looking like we're going straight into blue-black. But as we say that, I think this is fine with the play with fire, right? We're not looking to play. Like, I don't really want to play Dissipate, Drown Yard Amalgam, Locked in the Cemetery. Uh, if we end up in white, these cards are all very weak, and we are still kind of looking to play red. We have these two reasonably high-quality red cards. I think this pick is fine. Like, even coming in at pick nine, there's the Amalgam still in the Rotten Reunion. I, I know that we're saying, like, yeah, we're probably just drafting blue-black, but I still think the play with fire is the pick here. And then the Champion of the Parish just gets us, like, really locked into blue-black. We had tons of games to where you could see how super high-powered this was. Um, and I know I know it was weird. Like, you know, we take the play with fire, we pass on the Moon Ranger Slash. I'm just pretty convinced that red wasn't open in this draft. And so, if, you know, that's the way we talk about it, though. You know, you're trying to draft Esper Colors. If Esper Colors aren't open, we try to draft these crazy red decks. Uh, but, I mean, if Esper's open, Esper's open. And that's what uh, we came across here today. Otherworldly Gaze is fine. We were still looking at that Delver deck. Uh, we ended up with plenty of Shady Travelers. Uh, and yeah, I think things went uh, quite okay from this point forward. Really late Bloodstitch Scab. There was also a Falcon Abomination in there. The Gale Drifter gives us more Flyers, more Zombies, more Zombies. All Zombies all the time. So clearly super open here. Um, and yeah, not a bad draft. I dug it. I dug it. So... Let's go ahead and claim this prize. We're getting a little bit rambly here today. I'm getting a little bit hungry because I'm old. That's what, <laughs> that's what happens. You get old and hungry and you have to you have to cut the videos a little bit short. But still trying to open a mythic here. I want to see it say more than 20 gems. Uh, and then we're, we're going to call it a day. Nope. 
What you got there? Oh, wild card. Close. Am I crazy? Is it you? You get more gems for opening mythics, right? I just haven't opened a mythic since we finished off the set. All right, the last one. Show me that little mythic symbol. Twenty gems. So, all right. Well, that's gonna do it for us today. Hope you all uh, enjoyed the zombies. Maybe learned a thing or two along the way. Had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here.